Good morning. Obedience is too hard, isn't it? Today we're following the chronology here. We're over here at Jeremiah. Now we're going to chapter 35. We're looking at verses 1 to 5. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Go to the house of the Rechabites, speak to them, and bring them into the house of the Lord into one of the chambers, and give them wine to drink. Then I took Jeazaniah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Habazaniah, his brothers and all his sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites, and brought them into the house of the Lord, into the chamber of the sons of Hanan, the son of Igdaliah, a man of God, which was by the chamber of the princes above the chamber of Messiah, the son of Shalom, the keeper of the door. Then I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites bowls full of wine and cups, and I said to them, Drink wine. Now this part of Jeremiah records some events where Babylon is now in the land of Israel. They're coming, they're coming on down. They're getting closer, but they haven't yet laid siege to Jerusalem. Now, this whole section, chapter 35, it has to do with the descendants of a remarkable man named Jonadab. You might remember Jehu, who was anointed king by one of the servants of Elisha. This is that same Jonadab that Jehu invited up into his chariot when he was engaged in slaying the sons of that wicked king Ahab. Jonadab was very zealous, and Jehu was quite zealous as well. So that gives you a little picture of Jonadab. But he commanded his children, his descendants, that not to drink wine, stay out of the cities. We're going to roam the land. We're not going to plant any vineyards. So now God instructs his servant, Jeremiah, to bring them in and put wine in front of them. But of course, they were commanded by their ancestor, don't drink wine. So God is setting up a test here. This is something that God is initiating. Well, the Rechabites remain faithful to this command of their uh, ancestor 200, 250 years ago, or will they uh, slurp it up? Will they drink the wine in Jerusalem? So Jeremiah sets it up. He sets it all up in one of the uh, rooms in the temple chambers, and they are brought in. God desires and asks his servant to create this test. There are many times we read about tests initiated by God in the Bible, and this is, this is another one of those. Now, tests aren't set up to defeat us or to trick us. A test is actually a vote of confidence. The Bible promises that God will never allow us to be tested above our ability to overcome. Go over to your New Testament when you get a chance and look at text, for example, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. It says this very thing. God will not allow you or I to be tested in a way that's too much for us to bear. And this means that every test that God initiates for us to experience is actually a vote of confidence. He's saying, you can go up to the next level now. Check this out. He gives us an opportunity. This is a vote of confidence in his own power to give us victory and in our willingness to choose to receive his power. So we can count it all joy when we experience various trials. Those trials are signals that you've grown spiritually and God is helping you stretch and flex your stronger and stronger spiritual muscles. That's the kind of God we serve. Your personal coach, he's helping you grow all the time. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, the Rechabites, we're going to see what happens here the next few days. Will they be faithful or will they slurp it up? Lord, we want to be faithful to you, but we're in a very narcissistic age. It's probably rubbed off onto most of us, Lord. We tend to take the easy route, the conveniences, the things that we think we can hardly live without. We're so used to these different things. Lord, help us to trust in you. And whatever the Rechabites do here, we'll find out tomorrow how they fare. But may we, in our days, be fully given over to you, working with you, Lord, taking you up on your offer of power to overcome through Jesus. This is our prayer today, in Jesus' name, amen. So God be with you today in all of your uh, experiences, maybe even some tests. He will get you through it because he knows he can. All we need to do is have confidence in him. God be with you.